Stonehenge is one of those places that's fascinated me for a long time and, and I started work back here 25 years ago when we first started work on thinking about a new visitor centre and how the management of the site was going to go on. But that just led me into thinking about the site and, and its understanding and its interpretation and how we can explore it. And it's just mushroomed out from there and, and in a way Stonehenge has taken over my life for the last 25 years. <laughs> The first thing you have to do is kind of get your eye in for looking at the stones because there's two main types here. There's the really big ones right behind me, which everybody sees. They are the iconic uprights with those lovely lintel stones across the top. And those are sarsen stones. They come from Wiltshire and as we now know, they come from a particular area known as West Woods, just to the southwest of Marlborough. Um, those are the local stones, you might say. Inside it are some stones which are known as blue stones. We've done a lot of work on the stones themselves and um, Jeff Wainwright and myself set up a project called the Spaces Project which links Stonehenge with the Priscelli Hills down in Wales and in 2008 we were lucky enough to be allowed to excavate inside Stonehenge. In fact it's the only excavation that's happened inside the stones themselves in the late 20th and 21st century so we're very privileged to have done that. And the Sarsen project, which we're here to talk about today, arose from that excavation because we realised we didn't know much about the Sarsen stones. So we had all this material, but we didn't know much about them. So I teamed up with David Nash from Brighton University and we started work on the Sarsens and that led us back to Stonehenge and, and lots of new questions. I've been working on an archaeology project in Southern Africa where we were trying to use geochemistry to figure out where about stone tools that were made of Seal Creek came from. And um, in essence, because that project worked, I, I sort of thought, well, actually, we could probably apply this to start thinking about Stonehenge. So I got in contact with Tim Darvin, and I can't remember when it was. And after a, you know, a few email exchanges, we, we got together the idea for the, the, the project. Um, I received an email from, from English Heritage saying that um, a core had turned up from the middle of one of the stones at the centre of the stone circle, and would we like to have a look at it? Um, and my response was very quick, um, absolutely yes we would like to have a look at it um, because um, this core you can actually, you know, we have really good evidence we know exactly where it was taken from and it, it gives us a unique insight into the middle of the rock. So the thing with Stonehenge is it sat here for four and a half thousand years and it's weathered, it's been exposed to the elements and that affects the surface. Uh, so what you really need to do to really understand the chemistry of the rock is get beyond that outer surface and be able to analyse the interior and that's what this core allowed us to do. There's still lots and lots of things we don't know about Stonehenge. I mean it, it, it is a long, long agenda for people to do research and there's scope for lots of things to be done. Um, we've been, if you like, digging in a bit on the stones and thinking about the stones but those just lead out to a lot of wider questions about how Stonehenge might have been used, what its purpose was, why did they build it in the first place? Why did they build it here? And we don't have answers to those questions, although we do have lots of ideas and lots of theories and things which we can speculate about. And those, in a sense, provide the starting point for thinking, well, how can we, how can we work this through? We've got the chronology, we've kind of worked that out, we know where the stones come from now. Now we've got to think about the why questions. What was going on here? Um, and I think the answer to that is that we must beware of being too simplistic. Stonehenge is a big monument, it's a long-lived monument, it's a complicated monument um, and it's one that has lots of facets to it. The idea that it has one purpose I think is a, is a very overly simplistic approach. 